Oh, got a load of books that I got to go through. I was debating on whether to do this in two videos or just one. I'm going to try to knock it out in one video. Um, got quite a bit of books. Um, and I got a lot of um, dollar books. Uh, starting with um, these oversized Superman. Uh, well, not oversized Superman, but oversized books by um, Alex Roth. And to show you how, what I mean by oversized, this is a standard size comic book. All right. I got this Superman for $5 in a um, magazine uh, bin <clears throat> that my local comic book shop has. Um, and um, around this time, I think when these came out, I wasn't really in comic books anymore. I had uh, put myself on hiatus i wasn't even expecting to come back into comic books because um after being turned off by a lot of the um books and gimmicks of the 90s it kind of um put me in a way where i just walked away for a while and these came out um in let me see what year but they're done oversized books is three of them it's superman it's shazam and it's a batman and they were done by Alex Ross. And um, I don't have the year for these. But, um, ah, 2000. Came out in 2000. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful books that showcase um, the wonderful talent that um, Alex Ross is. And like I said, I got Superman and I got the Shazam. This is Superman Peace on Earth. And I got Shazam Power of Hope. And um, both of these cost $5 a piece. And I was so happy to get it. I, I kind of was bummed out that he didn't have the Batman. But I'll be on the um, lookout for the for it. Um, they're not really that expensive. Uh, it's just the fact of trying to find them. Probably could find them more like in a Barnes & Noble or something like that. Uh, more so than in a comic book shop. All right, now let's start with um, the regular books that I picked up. I definitely had to pick this up. Picked up two copies of this Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, and the reason why is because the first appearance of the Solar Rangers, a, a brand new set of uh, Power Rangers. Um, I don't know what's going on with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I haven't really been into it um, since my kids have kind of like grown up because when they were young, they used to watch it when it originally came on. And a couple of the iterations of the Power Rangers that came about afterwards. But as they grew older, they, they basically grew away from it and uh, just lost track of Power uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Actually, I lost track of it after the second set of um, Rangers. Um, I couldn't warm up to the other ones. Um, but this book is being talked about a lot uh, because of the first appearance of the Solar Rangers. And um, issue number nine, uh, I think, of this one, or is it Go-Go Power Rangers? I think it's uh, Mighty Morphin, uh, first appearance of Lord Draco. Um, I have that one, too. But um, there's something to be said for what's going on with the Power Rangers. And keep your eye out for, for what's going on in those books. I also picked up Silencer number 17. Um, I think it's going to end next issue with 18. But this has been, a, um, I really enjoyed the books that I have of this. And it's got me to the point where I'm going to go back in the dollar bins and start pulling out the rest of them so I can complete my run on, on this character. And um, I just got a feeling the character will be back. Um, it's a great character with a great story. And that's a great uh, villain. I didn't get a chance to read the issue yet, but I plan on it. Teen Titans number 30. Um, this is a good book. Titans is a good book. And at the end of this book, um, uh, Crush's father, Lobo, makes an appearance on the very last page, um, kind of welcoming his daughter in the um, only way that uh, I think he's a Cesarean. Uh I might be wrong, but only the way that they do, because they're a different type of people. But um, I can't wait to see the next issue of it to see where this is going. Now, this one, Naomi 5. Okay. This book, they finally caught up 
to uh, as far as comic book stores to order a lot of copies of it because um i went to the comic book shop today i bought some more um dollar books and they still had naomi five on the shelf but the funny thing about this issue is it has a lot of potential because it's revealing a lot more about her and revealing more of her her people um different characters and their first appearances are popping up in this book so i would advise anyone at least take get a, a, a one two copies of it to hold i know it's on the shelves and i know it's um um abundantly ordered this time around but it doesn't diminish the power of, of what this book has in it and like a lot of people who were kind of like basically against naomi at first because of whatever reason um now they're finding out that it's a very good book you know it's a very good book it's got legs on its own um even though next issue is the end of it it's not the end of that character. Uh, she's going to be joining Young Justice. And um, as popular as she has gotten now, I'm quite sure that we, they, they will be re-releasing um, Naomi again. And um, be, just be on the lookout for it. Um, picked up Immortal Hulk, number 17. And kudos to Immortal Hulk. For outselling Batman, uh, I don't have anything against Batman. I love Batman, but um, it's a wake-up call to what um, a book that Batman has become—a slow-moving book that isn't going anywhere. And um, don't get me wrong, I like Tom King. Uh, I like his writing, but there's a flaw that I've been noticing with his books. Every book that he has written is always about something psychological. Um, a psychological bent to it uh, as far as the characters twisting them up psychologically and um, which is all well and good but I mean get your story get it started and get it over with don't drag it along I mean for so long plus uh, you know with the wedding of Batman and Catwoman and all was entailed with that I mean just a mess but Immortal Hulk is a surprisingly good book um, I didn't catch on to it till around the fifth issue. I do have, um, some copies of the first. I don't have a copy of the second. I got the third. I think I'm missing like maybe one more, but, um, I, uh, as far as the second issue, um, I, I want a copy. I may get a copy, but I'm not pressed about it. I'm not pressed about, uh, the first appearance of Dr. Fry. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not paying that type of money for that. Uh, new Agents of Atlas, number one. Multiple new characters being popped up in this book. Um, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, we'll see how well this goes and how well it will be accepted. Maybe they'll be around for a while. Now, in the dollar issues, uh, this book I got in the dollar, in the dollar section. So, uh, God, I already have a copy of this. This is a great Yasmin Putri cover. For Nightwing number 54. And I was glad to find that in, in the dollar bin. And my B covers are like, I slowed down a lot on my B covers. Because um, it's like, every, like I said, everybody's done caught up to these B covers now. And I'm real selective of what B covers I'm, I'm going to get. Uh, Batgirl number 35, uh, Middleton cover. I, I like that. Um. The Matina, Batman number 69, a great cover. Teen Titans, number 30, uh, that's a great cover too. I like that one a lot. And it's not a B cover, but actually it's a, it's a B cover, but not uh, DC B covers, independent comic book. Ice Cream Man, number 12, I'll pick that one up. And these are the um, Battle Line covers that I picked up. For Marvel, um, Amazing Spider-Man, I think, issue, uh, I can't remember. But um, that's a great Black Cat cover. And Venom number 14 with the uh, um, Carnage cover. Pick that up. Now on to these dollar books um, that were on sale, 3 for a dollar or 15 for 10 And um, some of them in here may be... Uh, 
aren't dollar books, I'll let you know. But otherwise, these are all dollar books. Um, picked up, this is, was a, a book from the President's Drug Awareness Campaign. Um, when the Titans were, um, uh, I said, you know, one of them government type books to um, help kids deal with uh, not getting involved with drugs. But it's just interesting that they don't have Robin in it. Instead, they have this character called the Challenger, uh, if I remember correctly. He was leading the um, Titan, Titans. And, and this issue, and it was another issue that they had um, giving out by the government. I found this, Sub-Zero, Batman and Robin Adventures, uh, the one shot. I love this one of my favorite uh, Batman animated adventure um, movies. Uh, I love this movie. I watch it a lot. Um, a great, great movie with uh, Mr. Freeze. I, I always love Mr. Freeze because he's like, he's really, um, he's driven only to try to save his wife. Um, other than that, um, he, he's not, uh, well, he is a villain because he's going to do what, he, what he's got to do by any means. It means hurting someone else. Uh, he's more than willing to hurt someone else to achieve his goal. Picked up two more copies of this. This book, I'm surprised, doesn't um, hold that much of a value. Uh, this is a very important book. This is the first time Dick Grayson becomes Batman um, in Batman issue number 512. And, and for the life of me, I can't figure out why this book hasn't jumped up in price. Um, very easy, like I said, dollar bin. But... Um, it's an important issue because, like I said, the first appearance of Dick Grayson as Batman. Even though he wasn't the first person to become Batman, he gave that to um, Azrael. X-Men um, 342, and this is Joseph on the cover. He was a Magneto clone, and um, actually he was a good guy at first, but uh, I, don't, I stopped reading after a while. And I think he went crazy or something. I'm not. I'm not too sure. And he ended up dying or whatever. Stars and Stripes. Now this book I have never seen. I got the first issue, but after that I didn't see any issues anywhere. And um, by chance, in this collection that came out, um, it had some of a minute. I picked up issue number two, but the other covers. I mean, I mean they were okay, but just the art is just a little too wacky for me. Um, first appearance of a character called Paintball in this um issue, and um I picked it up like I said because I I don't see too many Stars and Stripe comic books out in the wild. I definitely had to pick this up. I already got a copy. I think this is a Mayhew cover. No, it's not a Mayhew cover. It's um I can't pronounce the uh, the name, but it's a great. She-Hulk issue number three cover. Beautiful, beautiful rendition of um, She-Hulk. Now, I know everybody knows J. Scott Campbell. Gen 13, number 12. I picked that one up, uh, which was another great book. And I see, getting back to Mr. Alex Ross, he's starting to become more and more noticed. Uh, I don't know what did it, but um, uh, his art is now picking up a lot of steam certain issues of certain books are really picking up i love this issue number 75 uh cover for um the jsa with the specter on the cover i think that's a great looking cover i got another i found this in the bin new avengers number seven i think i had like about 10 copies of this book uh first appearance of the illuminati same thing with this one teen titans eight First appearance of Ravenger, uh, which is, she is the daughter of uh, Deathstroke. Same thing with this one, Ghost Rider, issue 21, first appearance of Vengeance. But it's funny, they have, this is the first appearance of Vengeance. And I got another book, I think, in here. And I looked that one up, and that one says the first appearance of Vengeance. So um, I don't know if they came out at the same time, uh, and they're sharing the, um, uh, they're sharing the, um, uh, first issue, like uh, they did with the black costume with Spider-Man. Sorry about that. I had a message pop up on my phone. I hope it didn't pop up on my video, but I'll double check it and see. 
Uh, Wild Thing Zero. I find these a lot, but I like this because it pays homage to Incredible Hulk 181. First uh, appearance of uh, Wolverine's daughter, Wild Thing. I got a Peter Porker Spectacular Spider Ham issue number two. If I see these in the wild, I grab them. I grab all the Peter Park, Parker um, Porker um, books. Found some Marvel Age. Marvel Age number six. This is, has the first appearance of our first uh, preview of um, Better Ray Bell. I got this issue number seventeen. This issue number forty four. And let me get busy here. Got a lot to go through, and I'm already at 15 minutes. Star Wars Episode 1, Queen Amidala. Uh, Vampirilla 8 and 9, issue number, I think that's 8, and I think that one is 9. They're both uh, Mayhew covers, beautiful, beautiful covers. Um, now, okay, getting back to these newsstands, I've been watching a lot of videos, and a lot of people, out, they're not doing it on purpose, but they're giving out misinformation as far as how to figure out the timeline dealing with these uh, newsstand versus, versus direct edition book. Uh, Key Comic Book Market Watch, he hits it right on the head. He knows exactly um, uh, what he's talking about when it comes to newsstand and direct edition. Um, anything before 1979 is a newsstand. There was no direct editions printed anywhere before 1979. 1979 was the beginning of the direct market. Um, so if you find any comic books that, that have this down here and it has a black slash through it, those are 1979 issues, especially in Marvel comics. Uh, those are direct early, the beginning of the direct edition market. Now, those are what you want. You want direct edition books anytime before 1984, 85, 86. I put 84, 85, 86 in there because that's the equalization point. That's when direct edition and newsstand books basically were sold on a 50-50 basis. So they, they matched up. Now, after 1986, between 85 and 86, the direct market became the common book to buy. After 1986, newsstands began to decline, as you can see the way the cone is going. It was harder and harder year after year after 86 to find a newsstand. That's when you're dealing with your image books that came out um, and, and um, Marvel and DC. Uh, but mainly I'm dealing with all uh, the image books because they were uh, independent and they were mainly sold in the direct market. It was hard to find um, image type comic books on a newsstand, but they did sell on a newsstand. So when you find an image book or any independent book really uh, with, a, um, with a newsstand symbol on it, um, you should grab them. You know, but if you can understand my chart, like I said, 1984, 85, and 86, it doesn't really matter which whatever way you go because it's an equalization point. It's a saturation of both 50, 50% of direct and new stamp. If you're going anytime before 1984, you want direct edition books. You know, and anytime after 1986, you want new stand edition. Um, I hope that clarifies it for a lot of people because I've seen videos where um, some of these guys that should know better are, are, are just telling the wrong things or not giving the full story behind it. And I've seen people show books that are before 1979 and just saying, oh, it's a newsstand. Of course it's a newsstand. It can't be anything but a newsstand. And if it's before 1984, a newsstand isn't what you want. You want direct. And like I said, I'll repeat again. After 86, you want newsstand. But either way, if you get whatever book you get, they're fine. But certain books are worth a little bit more money. Like Spawn Number 1, if you got the newsstand of that, you definitely that book uh, is like a third more in price or, or even higher, depending on the on, um, condition of the book. 
because it's harder to find a newsstand. Okay, that's all I got to say about that. Now I'm going to show you some newsstand. Impulse number seven. I picked that one up. Um, and, and it's funny because when I went into this um, uh, comic book shop, he had picked up quite a bit of um, collection. And I mean, it was newsstands out the wazoo. But a lot of them weren't in all that great condition. And a lot of them, the books had turned kind of like a, um, a yellow brownish tint. I don't know if that they kept it in an area that was um, wet or damp or whatever. But I didn't pick them up because um, uh, there's, no, there's no coming back from a yellow turn, a book turn completely yellow where it should, pages should be white. Um, <clears throat> Flash number 98. Flash number 100. Now, this is the other Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, the new Ghost Rider, Midnight Suns. Um, what is it? Issue number 46. Uh, this one also claims to be the first appearance of Vengeance. Okay. Well, he's on the cover, so, I mean, if I had to go with either one, I guess I would go with that one because he's on the cover. I like this one because it's a um, homage cover. But as you can see, uh, as I was talking about the yellowing, it's got a, like a yellowing tint, tint. This one is not as bad as the other ones that I saw. But I, I definitely wanted to pick this one up. I mean, for less than a dollar, you couldn't beat it. Uh, Fantastic Four, issue 390. It's got a uh, Ren and Stimpy, issue number 36. Spider-Man 2099. Issue number 25, issue number 30, issue number 32, issue number 38, and issue, uh, also that has um, Venom 2099 in it. Uh, issue... Number 39, issue number 40. Even though uh, Spider-Man 2099 isn't really worth that much, um, the quality of these books were, that they were in were um, in such good shape that, I, I, like I said, I couldn't pass them up. Uh, direct edition of Venom, number one, with a great image of Carnage on it. Um, definitely, that, and this one I really was happy about. Spawn, number 31, first appearance of Redeemer. Um, and it's a newsstand. And like I said, Spawn, newsstand. And right now, Spawn is like a hot commodity right now. Um, I was so happy to find this book. This book is in great, great shape. No dings, no nothing. I saw it. I, I, I kind of like was kind of shaking when I picked it up. Because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. The Redeemer first appearance. Now, these Bianche, uh, Detective Comics, uh, I got quite a few of them, but I went back and they were in the, in the, in the dollar books. Um, and I said, well, I'm gonna try to get all the ones that I don't have to complete my, my, um, my set. So this is 829, 830, 8.32, 8.33, 834 and 835. Great, great um, Simon, or Simon Bianche uh, covers. This was wrapped up in a comic book. I had got it. And I thought, oh, this is one of the weirdest looking covers I've ever seen. But when I got it home and opened it up and put it in Mylar, it was a cell on top of a, a comic book. It was put on top of the comic book. And the um, animation cell was a Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. Um, this is the second um, one that I've gotten. And um, I'm glad to have it. I think they're pretty interesting. Animation cells. Um, now these, uh, Justice League uh, number 20 had that uh, three cover issue and it went over real great and but i think what made it uh valuable was the fact that it had the six dimensional version of uh the justice league but there were a couple times when they did a triple cover 
issue number 26 of Justice Society did it. Um, let me get it right. Which way am I going? Got to go this way. But I'm, I, don't, I didn't find... I got the third um, comic, but it's in my um, other comics. These are the books that I picked up from the dollar bin. And this is great Alex Ross art for issue number 26. And in Justice League of America, issue 12, they did the same thing. It was three covers that made a great image. Beautiful, beautiful book. So if you see them in the wild, I would grab them. I mean, they're, they're like I said, dollar bin books, but they're just beautiful Alex Ross art. And it seems like Alex Ross now, certain books of his are like picking up, picking up a lot of steam. So I can get rid of that. Picked up 52 week number 33. I got another copy of that with a early Batwoman cover. Uh, definitely had to pick this up. I got this one, but I want another copy of it. This book is overlooked a lot. Got a great jock cover. Um, it says Batman, issue number 646. Got another copy. I got like three or four copies of this one. Uh, Batman 663, great Joker cover. Uh, okay, this one I paid a little bit more for. This is Spawn number 190. I got this one for, how much did I pay for this book? Uh, I think $10, $10 for this one. Uh, because all the spawns after um, close to 200 or after, what is it, one, 140 or something like that, they're hard to find. Um, like I said, I'm not really into spawn, but I'm intrigued by what's going on with spawn. And I do like uh, Greg Capullo art. Got another Van Vengeance of Vampirella number seven. Adam Hughes art. Great art. And I picked up Vampirella Death and Destruction, issue number two. Another Adam Hughes cover. Now these, like I said, these are these books that I'm showing now. Um let me go through. They did not cost a dollar. These are from oh well, wait, a few of them are. But this one I paid $4 for. Uh, A-Force number one. $4 for Bitterroot number one. $4 for Cable and Deadpool number 38. First appearance of Bob. Bob the Hydra agent. I can't believe Now this I got in a dollar bin. This is Jim Lee... Um, uh, what you call them cover for Red Tanya number four virgin cover. I, I couldn't get it out. Um, this book got is worth a pretty good bit of money. I was so happy to find that. This in the dollar bin. Um, Green Lantern Emerald Warriors number seven. Also with this one, number 10 uh, issue. And that's a Clayton Crane cover of Guy Gardner. This was in the dollar bin. Um, Starfire number six, the Looney Tunes variant with Starfire and Pepe Le Pew. Also that one in the dollar bin, Green Lantern with the Batman versus Superman variant cover. Uh, this one in the dollar bin, Avengers 190 uh, with Ms. Marvel. I don't know if just when she joins or whatever. I'm not sure. This book intrigued me because of the cover artist. This is one of them uh, uh, giveaways from Harvey Comics. This is Back to the Future. But I had to do a double take when I saw the name on the bottom of the corner of the artist. This is a Frank Bruner cover. And Frank Bruner, I've always loved Frank Bruner art, especially when he did Doctor Strange back in the day. And Frank Bruner's art is closely compared to Bernie Wrightson, as far as I'm concerned. They, uh, their styles are so um, similar. And to find him doing a uh, Back to the Future comic just kind of um, blew me away. Uh, 100 page, uh, DC 100 page book, Wonder Woman number 211. I love getting these. I don't like getting them in this condition. This was a dollar book, so I didn't complain too much about it. But when I get these, I try to get them in as best condition as possible. Um, 
pick this one up in the bin, dollar bin, Wonder Woman. No, 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 I'm sorry. This is this book cost me four dollars. Uh two thirty nine. Uh, great cover with um, Wonder Woman and Jay Garrick Flash. <clears throat> $4 for that one. Justice League of America number 137 with Superman versus Shazam. I like this book because it's got uh, Earth 1 characters, Earth 2 characters, and Earth S characters in it. Back when they had the three, the three Earths. Um... Definitely had to pick this one up for $4. Uh, Brave and the Bold, Batman and the Joker, issue 191. I love Jim Apparel art when it comes to um, Batman. Uh, he just had a style of his own. And his Joker, you can always tell a Jim Apparel Joker. Jose Garcia Lopez cover for Batman number 353. Um, and that's really... The end of my haul. Oh, uh, there's one more thing. Let me pause for a second. Okay, I'm back. Okay. This, I got to give a shout out to Comics Most Wanted. Uh, he's a YouTuber, and he's been around for a, a little bit of a while, but he still hasn't gotten quite the um, numbers of su subscribers that he should be getting. And he had was talking about this book. And I think it flew under the radar, and I think it's still flying under the radar because apparently nobody's talking about it. He got his information from another YouTuber, and I can't remember, and I'm so sorry I can't remember um, their name, but I am going to give uh, Comics Most Wanted um, his props on this one. If y'all remember this book, uh, Harley Quinn number 57. The Tedesco cover. Okay, this book was super hot. Well, not super hot, but it was hot. It was hard to find. Um, and it's going. It's still going for a premium. It's, it's not talked about a lot, but I, I got a feeling this book is going to be brung up again. Because either this book or even the regular issue number 57 has the first preview of Naomi in it. And I think a lot of people have slept on this when they have not paid any attention to this. But Naomi appeared in a preview in this book here before the first issue even came out. So, like I said, give my props to um, Comics Most Wanted. And like I said, y'all guys need to watch his videos because um, he comes up with these tidbits every now and then, you know. And um, I had this book in my collection and i forgot all about naomi's preview was in this book now here's another tidbit tid, blah, 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 tidbit i may be wrong and i went back and i watched it again and i'm still saying something is funny in avengers uh end game at the very end when tony stark is uh you know gone he's giving his little speech or whatever to his family and they do like a um Showing all the heroes, this, that, and the third, and, and, and little vignettes or whatever. If you look at Black Panther and his mother, they are on a balcony. Um, and it shows like the um, whole of Wonk, uh, Wakanda. I don't think that's Wakanda. If you look in the sky, there's two planets there. And it's not the moon and it's not the sun. I think it's the first appearance of planet Wakanda. I could be wrong. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't watch this thing twice. And each time I'm looking at those planetary things in the sky, um, they're not the moon and the sun. And uh, it's a totally, totally different um, thing going on up in their sky. And I think they are already on planet Wakanda. I think planet Wakanda exists. And another tidbit for you. They had made mention of Namor, or oh, not Namor, but a disturbance in the ocean. And um, when Scarlet Witch, I mean, Scarlet, golly, dang, Black Widow has said something about, well, what did y'all do about it? Um, uh, the um, girl from Wakanda, the woman from Wakanda, rather, um, said that we left it alone. I think that that's where Namor is going to pop up with when they, they keep talking about the rock playing Namor. It's going to be something dealing with Wakanda. And see, I'm not a Black Panther reader, but I do think that there was a couple issues in Black Panther or something related to Black Panther when him and Namor got into it over, over something that happened and Namor 
kind of like Wonder White, but kind of off the face of the earth. And something, uh, I might not be right because, like I said, I don't read Black Panther like that. But um, I think the vibranium had a lot to do with it. And I think um, if you can find those issues, I think it's Black Panther issue one where they first talk about um, planet Wakanda. I think you might have something on your hands. Uh, I could be wrong. Now, like I said, that's something you take with a grain of salt and something if you want to investigate it. Rewatch um, Avengers Endgame when you can, if you can, and play, pay close attention to the end and watch where um, Black Panther and his mother are on that balcony and they pan to the sky. It's all like it's nighttime and they pan and there's two planetary things in the sky. Like I said, it's not the moon. And it's not the sun. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. You know. But it is what it is. Uh, and on that note. This is Bad Avenger. Whew. I got through it. Dang. It's one of my longest videos ever. Um, Y'all guys have a good night. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.